Happiness is more important to health than any medicine. Uh, you might scoff at the idea, call it new age and off the wall. Reserve your judgment until you've heard the story of a terminal cancer patient and the brain surgeon who offered her a straw. This is a scan of Connie Birch's brain 14 months ago. This, just one of four fast-growing malignant tumors surrounded by swelling. This is Connie Birch at work today. And her brain scan, clear of those tumors, a year later. Connie lived a typical Johannesburg life, keeping on top of a busy and stressful job as a publications editor, as well as being a wife and a mother. Seven years ago, she had had a brush with skin cancer, but remained clear. Until about November 96, I started getting a strange headache. I've had headaches all my life, so I paid no attention for a week or two or whatever, but it got worse and worse, different kind of headache, a sort of a pressure type of headache. The headaches wouldn't go away, and finally Connie's doctor referred her to a specialist. She kept the appointment, still thinking that it was no more than stress. The neurologist at the Linksfield sent me to the radiographers to get a picture, and they then sent them directly back to him. I had to come back to his rooms, and I waited. I was looking for the pictures, and we didn't know if they were back or not. The next thing he says to me, step in, I've got the pictures, and I can see on his face already that he's quite serious, looking quite serious. He had them on the light box, and he said the following. Mrs. Birch, there's no gentle way to tell you this. You've got four tumors in your head. <laughs> and there they were, shining on the, on the picture. I just thought, I can't believe this. I just got into such a panic. I wanted to, I wanted to bite my hands off with my teeth and throw myself on the floor and scream. I was beside myself. There was no time to think. The neurologist insisted she check into the clinic immediately for further tests. She went home and came back again, all in a panic-stricken few hours. She would have to see a brain surgeon. Sometime, either that evening or the next morning, Ian came and introduced himself to us, Dr. Weinberg, who had, we didn't know. At the time that I entered the picture, we had a, a, an essentially a pre-terminal situation. So uh, she would have died? She would have died imminently. In fact, statistically, she would have died within six weeks with or without treatment because um, in the brain four multiple melanomas um, are not receptive to radiotherapy and chemotherapy doesn't really cross into that area. It was only possible to operate on one of Connie's tumors and so Ian did, not because there was any hope it could cure Connie, but in order to confirm the diagnosis and at least reduce the swelling. It wouldn't change the prognosis at all. Her worst fears had come true. Not only cancer, but death within two months, and the medical profession could do nothing for her. But then the doctor said something else. She could do something for herself by changing her state of mind. Into Ian Weinberg, he says to me, on a good day, medicine can maybe do 50% for you. He said, you're not having a good day. We can maybe do 30% for you. Eventually, um, he said to me, however, we can do our 30% or our 50%, but the rest will be up to you. I didn't know what he was talking about, but something in my mind said, he's offering me a straw. The straw that Ian was offering was something called psychoneuroimmunology, or PNI. In plain English, the effect your mind has on your immune system. He had written a book exploring this idea. We actually had to read the book aloud, sentence by sentence, over and over again to try and get to grips with what it was. But in its purest sense, it is saying that getting a horrendous disease like this is not because you caught it or you smoked too much or whatever. There are contributing factors, without a doubt, that, you know, that would help you get it. But that fundamentally, it starts out with a kind of negative state of mind that you get into. And as I read it, it just was ringing such bells with me. Over the past year or two prior to that, I, I had been beset by a lot of anxiety of things, a whole combination of things that, that were taking the gloss off my life to the point of having no joy in it. It was a, a complete cycle of anxiety and feeling I couldn't fix anything. Many of us may feel our lives have lost the gloss, but the feeling of not being able to fix it, to do something about it, has been recognized as the mindset most likely to affect your immune system negatively. You could call it a malignant mindset. Are there scientific studies which say that 
if you are in that negative mindset, then your immune system, your um, T cell count that we've okay. come to know with HIV right. now, right. that that is actually it's factually really lower. Over the last 15 years, uh, more and more studies have been shown uh, to correlate very much with, with mindsets and with immune function in, in, in many spheres, both in animal studies and in clinical trials. Skeptics would say PNI can only apply to people interested in alternative medicine. When you first heard of this idea, yeah. was it completely foreign? Completely foreign. I had never heard of it. I never, you know, I'm the Were most into complementary health. Nothing. In on the contrary, I'm a journalist. I'm a cynic. Complementary health had never, health full stop had never been an issue. You know, I'd never. I was a terrible smoker, debauched eater. Um, still am to a, a <laughs> degree, but none of it. I'd never been, and particularly alternative homeopathy, all those things. I'd just been very close to it. So um, what made you believe this time? What made you grasp I'll onto it? tell you what made me believe it was because it was a brain surgeon who told me. <laughs> that sounds so arrogant. If I'd read it in the newspaper or I'd read it in a magazine, so I would have thought, mm, yeah, yeah, wacky, off the wall, this is off Broadway, not my scene at all. But because, ironically, because now I'm so cynical about doctors and what they know, because they said I was going to be dead and I wasn't. And he'd written a book. You know, also being a journalist and, an, and, a, and a writer and so on, it wasn't just pie in the sky that he talked to. And he'd done a lot of research and he had it backed up his, his story with a lot of research. But most importantly, it just spoke to me. It, it rang such bells with me. We all know the feeling of butterflies when you're nervous, of flushing when you're embarrassed. We even talk about people being sick with worry. We accept the link between what's happening in your mind and what's happening in your body. So why is it so difficult to believe that your mind can also make you healthy? So psychoneuroimmunology, which is such an enormous word, basically means that what you think and your state of mind impacts on your immune system. Simply put, yes, um, except that it's not so much the actual content of your thought, but it's the feeling that goes with the thought. Um, similar thoughts to different individuals might elicit a totally different um, emotional aspect. It has now come to be realized that, in fact, it is the emotional centers of the brain, as it were, which impact, impact much more significantly on immune function. Very roughly, how this works is that thought processes radiate from the cortex towards structures deep inside the brain, where we found our emotional circuitry. Nearby is the pituitary, the gland that controls our hormones and interacts constantly with our immune system via chemicals in the bloodstream, creating an intricate and complex network linking mind and body. Let's um, look at this in Connie's specific case. Um, she was sitting here. What did you tell her? What should she go out and do? Obviously, we, we concluded our conventional approach of treatment. And then I said to her, while we are um, directing a conventional treatment program to you and to try to reduce the tumors, you need to identify the negative processes that cause your unhappiness and ultimately your immune dysfunction and thereby you will neutralize the, the, the prevailing negative process, the, the prevailing negative life situation which gave rise to this problem. I had no idea what to do. I did not know where to start, except one thing that Ian in the bottom, in, in, a, in a page in that book, had listed areas of your life that you need to look at. Because PNI says that it's every area of your life you've got to go through and, and yourself deeply introspective process, looking at what could be wrong, what could be impacting negatively on you. And that ranges from, your, you know, basic stuff like your diet and your job and your things through to relationships, through to spiritual issues, finances, exercise, everything. Connie gave up smoking. She went on a strict detox diet before undergoing treatment. She gave up work she was no longer enjoying. And, supported by Ian Weinberg, she started evaluating all the relationships in her life. Simultaneous to this, as I was learning this stuff and finding out about it, I kept going back for the treatments. And each time I went back, things were looking better. B 
beyond the point where they'd said that the treatment would have any effect, like by the middle of the year, they said all the effect of the treatment I'd had was actually going to be over by then. So, but here we are, these things are shrinking and shrinking. Some of them are vanishing. Each time I go, another one, and to the point that they were either gone or inert, nothing happening, no growth sign or anything showing. Tony, but the, uh, the, that is an enormous uh, thing to happen after they had told you that you had six to eight weeks to live. The ego Can you boost out of that because the rebellious one in me said, watch me. Don't you tell me that when my sell-by date is. So are Ian and Connie just weird? Is P&I a fringe belief with one or two followers? Let's put our finger on the global pulse. Here's the internet, health, and there's immunology. And there we are, psychoneuroimmunology. The bibliography alone is extensive. Scientific pa papers. Oh, this sounds wonderful. This report summarizes the effects of laughter on the adrenal output. Just a cursory look at the internet indicates there's significant research into PNI worldwide. And Connie is committed to helping spread information about it at home. She and some friends have started a support group not only for people diagnosed with rare diseases, but for anybody who has an interest in being but well. We felt that, that, that people, need to, people need to know about this, not scientists and things. People like us need to know that there's something you can do yourself. Because people hear cancer and they think you, you can actually die of the diagnosis. Hearing that you've got it is so awful particularly if it's bad and advanced, that you can actually die of the diagnosis of that because everything tells us if you've got cancer, boy, you're a marked man, it's a voodoo death, there's no negotiation around it. And, and I particularly felt strongly that people need to know that you have to challenge it. You know, there's always a chance it's going to come back and kill us. There's always that chance. How do you know that this is not just remission? which is part I'll of the statistical exactly pattern. I tell you it's not remission because I've got a fresh new brain tumour as we speak. What in fact happened, we went on holiday down to the coast at Christmas time and I had some strange little neuro incidents. Back in Johannesburg last month, Connie's brain scan revealed the tumour was in a place where it would be difficult to operate conventionally. They decided to do radio surgery a procedure that focuses very high doses of radiation on the tumour. Ian said to me afterwards, after the event now, he said, p &I takes no prisoners. He said, you can lie to yourself, you can lie to your friends, you can lie, but your mind will know when you're telling the truth. And you know, people said to me, oh God, I'm so sorry to hear this, and oh no, whatever. In a way, it has borne out for me the, the, the p &I principles of, of what's going on there. The, the link between mind the and link body. between mind and body. The the most um, um, intense thing in my life is the one that I haven't fixed, that we haven't managed to resolve, and and I'd put it aside. I'd, I'd I'd shucked off all the easy stuff and done it and left this because it's such a difficult one to do. Difficult it is, but Connie and Ian aim to root out this new tumor using his medicine and her mind. Are you an exception to all rules, or can this really work for other people? I cannot see why I would be any different to anybody else who had the passion to want to survive and who was prepared to put in the spade work to do whatever it took. And I'm not talking about going out and buying a course or doing a thing or taking a tablet or doing a... It's personal hard work and it's attitude work. It's... Um, it's, it's thinking work and really finding out what the things are and being brutally honest about it. 